Scientists around the world are racing to meet the desperate demand to stop new coronavirus infections and reduce its ability to kill. Well, we met a San Francisco-based biotech doctor, Jake Glanville, about a month ago when the outbreak was starting to get serious. And we're bringing him back on here on Cron On because he and his researchers believe that they've found an answer. Dr. Glanville, thanks for taking the time to talk with us. Hey, Ella. Thanks for having me on. So while the world waits for an approved vaccine, you say that you've discovered that a known antibody may be used to help stop this new virus. Can you tell us the difference between a vaccine and an antibody and why you feel so confident? Sure. So with a vaccine, you're injecting little pieces of the virus into a person, and their body takes a few weeks to figure out how to make antibodies against that virus. What we're doing is skipping that process, and we're just directly injecting antibodies into patients. Uh, and then those antibodies would go, they would bind around the spikes on the outside of the virus, and the, the virus uses those spikes to invade your cells. So once they've been blocked, the virus is no longer infectious. What we did is we went back and took antibodies that were very effective against SARS, and we've modified them so they now recognize the novel coronavirus. And so this may be able to help people who are already infected while also preventing those who don't have it yet. How does that work? Yeah, so this is a big advantage over vaccines. With a vaccine, you can't give them to people that are already sick because it takes too long for their bodies to produce the antibodies. Whereas with our treatment, you could administer that to someone who's sick and it could immediately protect them. This has been the class of therapy that's been so successful for Ebola, where it went from uh, nearly a death sentence to 94% of people who receive an antibody with Ebola can survive. It's the same kind of medicine people have used for anthrax or RSV, uh, and there's been antibodies developed for HIV. So the way it would work is a patient would come in sick, they'd receive the antibody therapy, their body would be flooded with those antibodies, it would neutralize the virus, they'd get better and go home. And so this has been used to combat past viral infections. What makes you sure that it will work with easing symptoms and preventing new coronavirus infections specifically? Sure, so you know it's research, so there's still questions we're gonna test. Uh, the reason we're pretty confident is that the antibodies we started with were already very successful at being able to treat SARS. Um, they were able to neutralize the virus in a petri dish, and they were able to protect animals that were exposed to SARS. We have modified those to now recognize the novel coronavirus, which is a cousin of SARS. So our next experiments to confirm this is we're sending out our antibodies to the US military and to a Gates, Fo Gates Foundation sponsored uh, COVID consortium. And both of these groups are going to give our antibodies to hamsters and then see if they can protect the hamsters from getting COVID-19. So you're passing this along to the military to test this against the coronavirus because you don't want this in your lab, I assume? That's right. So we don't have the, we don't have either the hamsters or more importantly, we don't have the, uh, the SARS-CoV-2 virus in our laboratory. Um, so, and that's also just a good idea to have two independent groups confirm the finding that yes, these are working and yes, they're potent and they can protect an animal. If that looks good, we're also then running forward with uh, safety and toxicity at Charles River Laboratories and J, uh, JMP, JMP uh, scale up. So manufacturing of large uh, amount of material so we can begin a human trial at the end of summer. So what exactly are you seeing in your lab right now that is uh, allowing you to end up moving forward with this project? and? feel so certain with it um, when you're not able to go through that part of the testing yourself. Got it. So what we did in our lab is we cr we created the part of the virus that these antibodies bind to. So if you were to zoom into the virus, you see these little spikes on the outside of the virus. And on the tip of those spikes are these three little dongles that it uses to attach to your cells and tear open the cell and inject its genetic information and infect you. These old antibodies against SARS would bind to those little dongles and block them so the virus is no longer infectious. We produced those little dongles. It's called the receptor binding domain in our laboratory for SARS. And we also produced that same version of the novel coronavirus. And this allowed us to manipulate these antibodies and engineer them without having the whole virus in our lab. It was kind of like instead of getting all of Achilles, we just we just got his heel. And, and so now we know that these things bind. We know we successfully are able to bind very tightly to the novel coronavirus. We're now sending them out for confirmation that they can protect hamper, ha hamsters. And if the hamsters stay safe, that's a pretty good indication that humans will be safe as well. And so this all sounds like a sh sort of shortcut to how long it would take for developing and then releasing an approved vaccine, given that that could take about a year. Um, what's the timeline here? You're confident that you might be able to get this up and running by summer? Yeah, so we can, this is definitely going to be faster than a vaccine. It's still going to feel frustratingly slow. And that's because of a series of steps that we need to run through. So we can get this uh, up and running so we can run a phase one slash two, a human study by the end of summer, where we could be treating hundreds of patients in hospitals and evaluating how effective and how safe the medicine is. 
because provided that it looks good, we could use something called compassionate use, which is a, a it says that if you take a drug that is effective, uh, even though it hasn't been FDA approved yet, you can begin releasing it to subjects. So they did that in Ebola, and there, we could do that here. So we could start treating by September hundreds of thousands of cases. Uh, the, that is much faster than vaccines. It still is frustratingly slow because it's out to September. But one advantage here over a vaccine is 90% of people who uh, get COVID-19 don't have that severe of disease, right? They're sick. Some of them are miserable. Some of them don't even know they're sick. And then they get better and they're protected. It's really the 10% of people that go to hospitals that are in real trouble that's the problem. That's why we're all at home. That's why society's been fr frozen. Uh, the minute we have a medicine that doctors can go give to people when they arrive, this whole crisis is over because then people can go back to work. If they get sick, they have a treatment and it's no longer as deadly. I imagine there are several other companies, to say the least, who are now working on something similar here, and it would just be a win for the scientific community. If anybody is able to get something like this, it can help all people around the world. But um, what kind of a competition is there right now to get yours at the front of the line for the federal government to recognize as a solution? Yeah, so there is definitely one huge competitor in the space. It's the virus. We're all working to try to solve the same problem towards that same virus. There are a couple other great companies that are also producing antibodies. So this is a popular strategy. Uh, we think we're uh, somewhat ahead compared to most of the groups, although there's a couple other really good groups out there. Our challenge so far has been that these other groups have you know, lobbyists and they're big. And so they were able to contact government earlier than us. That, that said, we've been having uh, discussions with multiple arms of the government. We've been invited to submit a grant actually tonight, right after this interview. I'm going to complete the submission. Um, to enable that work to go forward. And then groups like Charles River Laboratories have volunteered parts of their services to enable us to push this drug forward. I think everybody wants to have a working medicine so we can go back to work and we can hug our grandmothers again. You're watching Cronon, the Bay Area streaming news 24-7.